talk about rushed. My God, here I was talking about not having enough time to get to know the characters, being introduced to new guys mere minutes before they are killed in fire explosions. Little did I know that Rush Job the episode was almost upon us. Episode 8 of Masters of the Air introduces the Tuskegee Airmen, the Red Tails, the Black Pilots, and oh boy do they ever gloss over their plight. I did a bit of reading on black pilots in World War II, basically nobody wanted them. In order to exclude them, they were set way more rigorous admission requirements. As a result, the black pilots that made it through the screening were among the highest skilled of them all. Not that this show wants to let you know that. One thing you need to remember about Masters of the Air is that it's an American production, mainly for American audiences. As such, it aims to show American servicemen in the best light possible. No one was sexist, no one was racist. Those who slipped through the cracks were the kind of mild cartoon racist that you would find in a children's book. Maybe a sideways glance or moving to another seat when the black guy sits down at the same table. If there were Brits in this episode, they would have been tarring and feathering these Tuskegee airmen. Alas, the Brits were all executed for moronically attempting to escape last episode. Modern shows also suffer from having to adhere to modern sensibilities. So while they want to express how poorly the black guys were treated, they can't actually show it because that would be too offensive. So you end up with this whitewashed version of history where the black guys seem to have not been treated that badly at all. In this episode, one of the Tuskegee Airmen has a line akin to, Our country may not be where we want it to be, but we're getting there. Then they're put into the barracks with the white pilots, and it's all hunky-dory with the exception of old Goldtooth seemingly not being all that happy about it. In fact, the show probably makes the German interrogator the most racist, not through who do he's a Nazi, but through his almost I have a black friend type lines about how he loves jazz. Feel like I'm ranting, but this episode is the very definition of shallow. He gives a cursory nod to important issues like race and then just continues on like nothing happened. This is part of the reason why I'm giving episode 8 of Masters of the Air a 6 out of 10. New people introduced in the second to last episode. It really feels like, excuse the term but I can't think of a better word for it, box checking. You're telling me you couldn't introduce these guys earlier? Or maybe give them their own episode? Or their own show? And D-Day! D-Day is glossed over in Croz's meth-induced coma. And we're back to short episodes. They claim it's 51 minutes, but it's at the 44 minute mark when the next week on section starts. The final episode needs to be a two hour movie length episode or they're not going to be able to fully touch on anything sufficiently to really satisfy me. Let's get into the spoilers. The title sequence is all of 1 minute 30 into the episode. We're introduced to some fighter pilots. Fighter pilots in our bomber show. But I guess they are doing bombing runs. Nighttime bombing runs at that. Did they manage to learn something from the Brits? This first scene gave me a sinking feeling because I was worried that these Tuskegee airmen were going to have everything go swimming before them. Is this the first mission shown without a casualty? Anyway, we're introduced to Alex Jefferson and they actually set up a character trait or skill in this opening scene. He likes to draw. He wants to get into the big fighting, but it'll come soon enough. Cut to Starlog Luft 3, and I don't know if this is a Yank thing, reenacting baseball matches in the backyard, but I took this scene to imply that Bucky was going crazy just sitting around all day. Another nice dig at the Brits for their escape attempt. If only they were patient like these Yankee boys, they'd have survived. Instead, they were impatient and it cost them their lives. Silly billies. Cut to Crosby and we're actually seeing him doing some work, not just being an adulterer. He's going to spend the next three days in a row leading into D-Day, awake, making plans for 200 missions. That's a pretty good clip. 20 minutes per mission, assuming no breaks for food, toilet, a nice stretch. A quick cut to Subwooden Westgate as a spy in France being mistreated by a German. Just in case you forgot that with mean people. Cut back to Crosby as he's getting meth from the doctor. Cut back to Westgate, for some reason now all dolled up. Is this another day? Who knows? She's taking photos for the invasion. Photos of what? Dunno, don't care. We just need to make sure we check the box for showing that women were a valuable part of the war effort. This really feels like an afterthought. It's not tied to the story at all. Crosby made it to 67 hours and has passed out. 
Rosenthal alerts the crews that the invasion of Europe is imminent. Cut to Starlag Luft 3 and Buck is organising a stunt pool. Bucky comes wandering along and wants them to play baseball, skin versus bones. I guess they didn't get the memo that none of the actors had lost weight for these roles, as not a single guy is skin and bones. Good to see they put down some nice dry sand for the actors to have their fight in, right next to the obvious puddles that were trying to make the camp look like a soggy hellscape. We're treated to Joe and Macon exchanging photos of the girls or blocks of land. Seeing as Joe wants to marry his sweetheart when he gets back and have kids, he'll have to die. Sorry buddy, that's what you get for being a breeder. Doctor Who, Chudi Gatwa looking, how do they say it these days? Zesty? Is that the word? Again, they gloss over important stuff. Last time we saw these black pilots, they were bemoaning the fact that they were fighting on the periphery. They wanted to get into Germany. Now we're seeing the aftermath as they celebrate their successful mission. But we do not get to see the successful mission. So here we see the lack of promotion for these black pilots. People who have flown more than enough missions to be promoted, but they haven't. Why? Well, you know, we just can't come out and say it. Did they just cut the absolute crap out of that scene of Doctor Who joining the card game? So we just skip straight over D-Day. We get a flashback as Rosenthal wakes Crosby from his three day blackout. But it may as well be a computer game render. At least we learn that the Luftwaffe is basically useless. So the whole we're going to use bombers as bait thing from last episode was just that, bait. Rosenthal himself flew three missions over Europe. Fast forward to D plus 60, wowee. We're really glossing over things now, boys. They're discussing what the Germans will do with the POWs if they get invaded. Kill them, free them, or march them further into Germany. Bucky explains that they'll do it at gunpoint by gesturing to Buck's head. But they didn't have very good coverage with the cameras and his hand is obscured. Take that one from the top, boys. No? Okay, keep rolling. The Tuskegees have to do a mission where they won't have enough fuel to make it back. So they'll have to land somewhere and hope they can make it back or blend into the population. Seems like an extra risky strategy. So of course, stupid bloody Westbrook can't get rid of his tanks. And then he doesn't bail in time. That's just typical Westbrook. No, Westbrook! Jefferson and Doctor Who survive being shot down, but I assume it's Macon. He's done his neck. Back to Starlag Luft 3. The SS is taking over the camps. So Macon's all, when I get back, I'm going to help America get where it's supposed to be a lot faster. Big drum roll for effect. Is he some politician or something? Macon and Jefferson luckily just happened to be bunking with our heroes. Do they always bunk people of the same crews together? Thankfully, Buck is there to welcome them. And only Goldtooth really gives them anything more than a bit of side eye. Crosby is getting another month off. His willy's gonna be rubbed raw by the end of this war. Back to Starlog Luft 3. The Tuskegee are working out whether they can trust the white pilots and vice versa. You know they're gonna get together, it's obvious. So they start making preparations to fight for their lives, making weapons and sharing combat techniques. Crosby heads into London for one last night of Nookie before heading to New York to infect his wife. What a top bloke. Unfortunately, Subalton, sorry, Captain Westgate has been reading Native Sun and found out how poorly the Americans are treating the blacks. So she wants out of this relationship. Crosby tells Rosenthal, what if when we get home the pussy's not as tight as it is over here in England? Poor guy. The Russians are into Germany and the Germans are on edge. I guess they didn't replace the camp commandant with an SS guy after all. Episode 8 of Masters of the Air falls into the same traps as all the previous episodes. For that reason it deserves a 6 out of 10. It's lucky it didn't get less, it just touched on things. Hey you guys remember D-Day? Well here's a 5 minute mention of how it was all over and done with. You guys heard about the Black Fighter pilots? Yeah, well here's a little snippet of one of their missions. I hope we passed your test. Remember how women played an important role in World War 2? Well here's the 5 minutes we carved out to show that happening. How about an entire episode devoted to these things? Or better yet, a 4 part miniseries on the Tuskegee Airmen. Or a series on the Special Operations Executive. I'd watch that as long as it wasn't made by the same hacks who made Masters of the Air. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.